Saturday morning live from Lafitte Gallery located at 227 North Market Street in Wilmington, Delaware. Let me repeat the location. Lafayette Gallery Vision Center. Vision Center, that's the important part. It's more than a gallery, it's a vision center. And we are located at 227 North Market Street in Wilmington, Delaware. I am the owner and award-winning folk artist Eunice Lafayette, and I'm your host for Saturday Morning Live, and I'm a little nostalgic here, because my favorite exhibition is my Black History Month exhibition. Of all the exhibitions I do in that gallery, that is the favorite, because it speaks to our history, our culture, where we have come from, or diversity, where we are today, and where we are going, takes in all of that. And the theme of my exhibition was from the Gold Coast of Africa to the election of our first black president to the present Black Lives Matter movement to the election of our first black vice president, female black vice president. See, it's a long journey. And those of you who have traveled with me on this journey, you should have learned a lot because I didn't sugarcoat anything. I talked about the horrors of slavery and the plantation system. I gave details of that. And I talked about the reason for the abolition of slavery, which a lot of people don't even grasp, that it was not out of the benevolence of the slave masters, the plantation owners. And even with the abolitionists, they did their job. But the underlying reason as I explained from Dr. Eric Williams, former president of Trinidad and Tobago, his book, The Capitalism of Slavery, laid it out. It was abolished for economic reasons. King Sugar was no longer king in Europe, and all the economic woes that came with the plantation system, but more so, the role of the slaves in those rebellions that was a critical component of the abolition of slavery, lest we forget. They didn't just roll over, they weren't that docile. They fought, as in Haiti, the first place where slavery was abolished. And throughout the plantation system, we learn about the resilience of our ancestors. We are celebrating Black History Month and we want to focus on that resilience and how we can preserve that resilience in our children by telling them about their heritage and their ancestors. We are lacking in that area. We need to do better with preparing, preparing our children for the future. My mom, as I said, prepared me well. She told me about my ancestors, how strong they were. Didn't take any stuff. I came to corporate America. I didn't take any stuff. And I, uh, just Since we're on a review, let me put the spotlight on that image on that wall right there. That's me right there, sitting as a plaintiff in a discrimination case. Didn't take the stuff. Okay, so we're closing out the exhibition. Last evening was just a wonderful experience here at the gallery. My curator, Joe Redbird, who is one of the instructors at Bellevue Community Center, brought in 12 children, youth. Yeah, they're in their youth. And a total with herself, three instructors. And we had a great time. 
I took them on that tour, yes, that triangular trade. They learned a lot. We had fun, trivia. It was just exciting. And it is so unfortunate that more educational institutions did not take advantage of bringing... I, I even offered virtual presentation. I called up a few schools, explained to them there was this great exhibition that they could get their children involved, that we could set up a virtual viewing of the exhibition. They dropped the ball. Where there is no vision, the people perish. That's what it says out there. Yeah, we need to get a vision, make things happen. Granted, we are in the pandemic. Come on, get out of the pandemic bubble. We need to train our children for the future generation. Who are going to be the scientists, the educators, the technologists, the public speakers, if we, you know, succumb to not doing anything to bring a different perspective to our children. That homeschooling, and I salute parents, I salute the instructors who are doing the virtual learning. However, there is a missing component. Sure it is. When those children came here, all masked up, those 12 youth who came to this gallery last evening learned about geography. I took them on the globe. Yeah, it's a global tour. They learned history, sociology, politics, the whole nine yard. They learned it all. So, in, uh, educators out there, come on. Let's try to... Let's try to get out of that bubble and the fear of the pandemic. Yes, we must be cautious, and no one can be more cautious than me. I was a compliance officer when I worked in corporate America, so I know about compliance, and I am very, very compliant. We have had paint classes in my gallery last year where 40 children in small groups of five came in, masked up, Disposable gloves, not sharing any materials, two to a table, one at each end of the table, six at a time, no more, well, it was between five to six. And they, they got a great life enriching experience. Yeah, no one got sick. Come on. So we need to do something about education. Otherwise, we are going to be leaving many children behind. I have one piece titled, Leave No Child Behind. In this pandemic era, children are being left behind. And more so, African American children are being left behind because in terms of technology, they're lacking in technological skills. And some of the parents do not have the wherewithal to provide that. So I think they give them a laptop, yes, but you need a hotspot or you need internet. So the laptop alone won't do it. We are leaving children behind and I lament that. So back to yesterday evening. So the children, the youth, these were um, up to ninth grade, uh, uh, all the way up to, I think, 10th grade. They came in. 12 of them, and they had a wonderful session here. I did, did, I put on my teacher hat, quiz, you know, I showed them the exhibition, did trivia, asked questions, they grasped it, and then I turned it to them for them to ask questions. We had a wonderful time. So yes, the last evening was the closing exhibition today. The pieces come down. I started this morning getting out my bubble bags, and I'll be bubble wrapping all the pieces, sadly. I don't like to put art in storage, but I have no choice, because you're out there and you're not collecting. So the art will be, the Black History Month pieces, when taken down, they're going to be put in storage. And my curator, 
Joe Redbird is coming in this afternoon. She'll be hanging a new exhibition for Women's History Month. Yeah, we keep going here. It's a lot of programs here through this gallery. So then, I am in recap mode. I am recapping Black History Month. And um, for those of you who watch me continuously, you know my take. Black History Month is a month, but Black History is 365 days. And all the exaltation of black folks during February, that won't do it. We need to do it every day. We need to recognize people every day for what they're doing. Don't wait until February. And we try to be political, especially in corporate. Oh, they try to, you know, I am from that, from that school. They try to be politically correct. They put up a few prints around the place and little banners, etc. And when Black History Month is over, they, you know, they roll out their race mats. You know, they're, they're not all inclusive every day, 365 days. I'm not labeling all corporations out there, or, but um, I am talking from experience. Black history should be every day, 365. So then, yes, we are recapping the Black History Month exhibition at Lafayette Gallery. And I have the, the um, highlights here. So let me show you how I proceeded to deliver the story. That's Storyteller right there. So for the last month, I have, I have been telling the story of our black history. That's my famous Storyteller piece. I started the story in Europe. Let me get my map because um, black history did not begin in Africa. Okay, so here's my, here's my um, world map right here. That's where it began. Point one, Europe, to the Americas, to the Caribbean. It was a triangular trade and back to Europe. Yes, that's what it was all about, that triangular trade. Slave trade or slave history. So, yes, I discussed every aspect of the plantation. I talked about um, slavery and its abolition. Talk about the Underground Railroad. Give credit to two diverse people who right here in the city of Wilmington were station ma masters, Caucasian, Thomas Garrett, African-American. Tubman, yes, Harriet Tubman and Garrett. And that's why my exhibition was not just black history. It was diverse black history. Yeah, okay. So, from the Gold Coast of Africa to the plantations, right there, plantation, another plantation. And then we talk about what happened on plantation, plantation life, culture. I laid into the importance of storytelling because that's how the culture was passed on. And then to abolition and the post-emancipation era all the way up to the civil rights movement back in the 60s and the segregation. Yes, I have those pieces there. That's my dog. I'm getting ready to bubble wrap them. Dr. Martin Luther King over there, the dream and all. So from there, we come to a high point. The high point was in 2009 when the first black American president, Barack Obama, was inaugurated as our president. This is a collage I created, and that reflects the night when he was named president of the United States from the Gold Coast of Africa. His, his father was from Nigeria. Yes. Okay to the election of the first black president, then all the way to current day, Black Lives Matter movement. 
Black Lives Matter movement right over there. And you remember last May, the chance, no justice, no peace as in Eno? Well, I did it a different way. Call on the authorities that be, the powers that be, to K-N-O-W, to no justice and no peace. So that was a big highlight for me. And then the next big highlight of black history took place right here in my city, the famous city of Wilmington, Delaware. That's where it took place, where back in August, for the first time, a political convention went virtually at the Chase Stadium. The Democratic Convention had their, um, their convention there. It was the first virtual. And thereafter, the election campaigning continued up to the high point of November the 7th, when Delaware's favorite son, Joseph R. Biden, was named president number 46. And the first, and that is my portrait. You know, I, I'm not a portrait artist, I'm folk, but I, I think I got a resembling enough. I got a resemblance right there. Yes. That was when VP Kamala Harris was named the first black female vice president. I think she's VP number 49. Yeah, she's VP number 49. So we have, a, we have celebrated a lot. My historical perspective journey for Black History Month has been very rich and and those who followed me should have learned a lot but the exhibition is coming down today along the floor i dropped the bags they're labeled and i'm going to be taking down this exhibition it's coming down sadly for me because as i said um, this exhibition is my most passionate exhibition of all the exhibitions I do this is the one that um, really grips me to the heart of taking that journey from the Gold Coast to our first black president to our first black female vice president that's a rich history that is rich I pose the question right there on the screen and the question is What's on your walls? Let me put my face back on the screen. Yeah. I'm here now taking down an exhibition, approximately 30 works of art, paintings, of which the bulk of them are original paintings. Original, original. Those paintings are going to be bubble wrapped today and they're going to be put back in my storage. My curator comes in this afternoon and she's going to be mounting exhibition for Women's History Month. So yes, we talk the talk. We gab about black history. What's on your wall? If I come to your office or your home, will I see black history represented? Will I see that? And uh, let me not be biased. It does not have to be the work of Eunice Lafayette. Here in the city of Wilmington, Delaware, there is a vast amount of famous artists right here in the city, African-American artists trying to eke out a living. Um, you know, we call ourselves starving artists, and that's rightly so. Because people, and it, I always say it, and I repeat, it is not a money issue. It is a value. How much do you value art enough to collect it? How much do you value black history enough 
to collect a work of art created by a black artist? That's a question. So what's on your wall? When I walk into a building, be it be, a, be, it be government or corporation, my first view, I look at the walls. And the walls tell me the culture of that organization. Oh, yes, that, it's a true reflection. I have gone to cities, and I have traveled extensively over this country. I've, got, I've been to quite a lot of cities in this country. And, as, and when I approach a city, or when I'm going to a city building, the art on the wall represents that city. Not so in the city. Not so. The, the state of Delaware does not, repeat, does not have an art consultant. Not at all. Research it. We don't have an uh, art appraiser. We don't have that in the state of Delaware. I had to call on Maryland once. I had questions about appraisal. I had to go out of state. What is wrong with our state? And we are the greatest state in the nation. We are the first state. The first state to ratify the Constitution. We now have a president who is from the first state. We are a great state. We are recognized nationally and internationally. But it's time we change our value set. It's time we look to values. It's time we support black artists. And the other day, I put this trophy out. And let me, let me highlight it. Because when I speak now, I am not just speaking from the top of my head. I am speaking because I have the authority to speak or to advocate for artists. And here is where that advocacy came from. It was bestowed to me. Right there. It says there, that's the governor, former governor, Governor Jack Markell, presenting me with my award, which was the governor's award for the arts in 2014. And it was in the category of folk art advocate. So when I speak passionately, don't, don't feel offended. Don't get me wrong. I am advocating because there are too many artists out there who cannot make a living in our city, right here in this city and state. They are no, we are not getting the su support of corporate America. We don't get the support of businesses. You go into their places, most time you're going to see some black and white prints. Oh, those are politically correct. They're not going to put my art in their place because probably it's too controversial. Well, hear me out. A British Street artist, Bansky said, art should disturb the comfortable and comfort the disturbed. So... Yes, some of my pieces may be disturbing, but it's it's about facts. Look at this. Let me let me go, put it on the original. No justice, no peace. Why why why, why couldn't that be in a government office? I am not telling you what to put on your wall. I am highlighting history and culture. Why don't we represent on our walls the art of our city? And there is so much. Okay. And my art is the most diverse art around. Most diverse. I have 20 different themes. Over 28 years I've created art on 20 different themes. Okay, so you don't want my politically correct piece? You don't want my controversial looking? What's wrong with this? It takes a village. That's what it says right there. It takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village 
to grow a business. Okay, so Women's History Month is coming up. And look at my three women. They're diverse. There you go. Three women balancing with the world on their shoulders. Balancing the world. The art. As for the music. Music of all types. Jazz. It's all here in this gallery. And it's here in affordable affordable pieces okay you know the commercial is important so there goes the original Aretha Franklin Lady of Soul actually the original soul that's a G claim this is a small oh this is we're talking now about the guitars yeah how many guitars that is a large piece. It is on canvas. It's gicle. This is a little piece, tiny piece right here. It is five by seven. It is framed and it's $20. Come on. So what are we talking about? Money? Money is not the issue. Search your values and um, ask, why are we not collecting art of black artists? And there are many, many black artists in the city, and I've been, uh, I've mentored them over the years. I've counseled, counseled artists. I've helped them to price their work. One lady came in here in 29, 2019, rather, and she was pricing her beautiful work at such low prices. I said to her, you only live once. When you give that away for that price, it's your original. So I helped her to price her work. Now she's doing extremely well. I'm not a selfish artist. That's, that's my advocacy right there. So here is the trophy that, gave, that gives me the right to advocate right here. One of a kind was made for me. And this was the award, Governor's Award for the Art in the category as advocate. That's what I got this award for. And I'm using my advocacy. So, well, let me... Uh, it's take down day. Huh? My ba bu bubble bags are here. I'm getting ready to take the art down from the wall. They're going to be put back in storage until next Black History Month. That shouldn't be. Okay, so... If you cannot buy the original art, okay, so that's, uh, oh, by the way, this is in a museum. Thanks to the Biggs Museum. Okay, I'm not a complainer. I just speak truth to power. I want to thank the Biggs Museum in Dover for collecting this original painting. That's a limited edition. My Kobe Bryant painting the, about the Mamba Academy for Sports. Yeah, the Biggs Museum collected that. More museums. It took me 27 years to get my work in a museum. Well, more museums should be collecting. Why not? Okay. So, here are collectibles from my art. I'll tell you where to get them in a moment. The same village I showed you, right there. That's a village tote bag, a mug, a t-shirt, and there are other... The products. That's Kobe Bryant, my painting. That is a tote bag. That's a carry-all uh, carry purse. And that's a t-shirt. So, again, if you don't want to um, collect the original, then just collect something. What's on your wall? If you're just joining me, good morning. And welcome to Saturday Morning Live from Lafayette Gallery Vision Center, located at 227 North Market Street in Wilmington, Delaware. And I'm your host. I'm coming to you this morning with a wrap-up for my Black History Month exhibition. And for those of you who started watching before, I got very passionate about the fact that people are not collecting the R of black artists. And I made the distinction. I say, you don't have to collect the art of Eunice Lafayette. 
I am advocating that you collect art of black artists. There are many, many famous black artists right here in the city who are starving. Okay? So support, support black artists. Support living artists. Okay, so here's, a, here's my, um, my box with um, Women's History Month is coming up. Again, what I do, I try to make the art affordable. There we go. Remember I said how great the city of Wilmington is? That we are nationally and internationally known? That piece is titled, Wilmington, A Place to Be Somebody. It is a copy, small frame, signed by the artist, and all it costs is $20. Everybody should have a copy of Wilmington, A Place to Be Somebody. And here are the others. These are other pieces of work, very affordable. Mugs, get yourself a mug. These are not just mugs. They are mugs with the original work of a famous artist, signed by the artist. I even signed the mugs. They have signatures on them. So I encourage you to get something, get a mug. Get a mug, get a t-shirt. Get something that you can pass on to the next generation to show them what it's about, what to teach them about their history. So thank you for watching. I have to go take the exhibition down because my curator is coming in later and she will be hanging my new works for Women's History Month. So there goes the bubble bags on the floor. This is a part of the, the business I don't like. I don't like to take the work down and put it in storage. Shouldn't be in storage, should be on your wall. Thank you for watching. I'll be back um, uh, with a sneak peek of the Women's History Month show. I'm here today until 4 o'clock. If you live in the city of Wilmington, Delaware, come on over to 227 North Market Street. If you are out of the state, then go shop online at www.lafaitegallery.com. You'll get my original paintings, limited edition print, my catalog, and note cards. To come to the gallery, just give me a call at 302-656-6786. And the mugs, t-shirts, etc. I was just showing you, those are obtainable for purchase at a website titled fineartamerica.com. Type Eunice Lafayette in the search bar. will bring up all my products. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.